Hello and welcome to the channel. This is the second part of the topic of India-China relation. Uh, I hope you have seen the first part of the video. And this is the second part. And if you haven't seen the first part, please find the link in the description section below. Or else you can find the links in the i section above. In this video, I will cover the economic and the trade relations between them and at last I will come to a final conclusion so I request all of you to watch both the parts at the same time my target in this video is focused only on the education purposes so let's begin now uh, following the recent clashes with the Chinese troops in the Ladakh region there has been a growing sentiment in the country to boycott the goods from China. However, this development has caused an alarm among the industry, various industry bodies that are concerned about the adverse impact in the event of a blanket ban on the exports in several sectors. The sectors include automobile and uh, pharmaceuticals. Because China accounts for a sizable portion of India's top imports, especially in, in the, uh, where the intermediate products or the components and the raw materials are concerned. Now, India is basically a country where market with finished goods and it takes various intermediate products and components on the raw materials from the market of China. Also China is Asia's largest economy and the world's second biggest in terms of GDP that is about 13.6 uh, trillion dollars but India is uh, just at number 3 in Asia with uh, nearly around uh, 2.7 trillion. So from supplying the industrial components and the raw materials to investments in India's startups and technology firms. China is India's biggest trading partner just after the US. Now let's see the imports of uh, Chinese products from, to India. Now it uh, comprises of smartphones, electrical appliances, power plants, uh, inputs and then fertilizer, then the auto components finished steel products and the capital goods like the power plant equipment, telecom equipment, metro rail coaches, iron and the steel products and the active pharmaceutical in ingredients or API which is said to be the bulk drugs and the chemicals then the plastic engineering goods and this data is according to the Ministry of Commerce as you can see here these are the products various products and uh, then the neighboring country that is China uh, who accounts for around 45 percent of the India's total electronics Im import imports and the Chinese smartphone brands like the Oppo, Vivo and the Xiaomi they are market leaders they are market leaders in India with around uh, 72 percent of share put together uh, leaving the South Korean giant Samsung and uh, US giant Apple behind. Now a, th uh, a third of machinery that is one third of machinery and almost two fifths of organic chemicals they are also uh, purchased. India purchases this from uh, China and the automotive parts and fertilizer and the other items where the China share in India's import is more than 24 25% uh, so several of these uh, these several of these products they are used by the Indian manufacturers in the production of the various finished various finished goods various finished goods 
thus thoroughly integrating China uh, in India's manufacturing supply chain manufacturing supply chain uh, for in instance uh, India sources close to uh, close to 90 percent of certain mobile phone parts from China and uh, this is the uh, pie chart for the uh, financial year of 1920 as the import pie chart whereby one can see there is a 15 percent share that is as China is the biggest uh, importer for in India for the year of financial year of 1920 and also you can see that uh, in in case of bulk drugs or the APIs which are uh, the sources for the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical generic drugs the, they are procured maximum from China that is uh, almost around 70 percent of of it now for the export even as an export market China is a major partner for India uh, at around 15.5 billion dollars it is the third largest destination for the Indian shipments that is when India is uh, shipping the goods to China then China is becoming the third largest partner export partner of India as you can see from this pie chart here and this is the percentage 5.33 percent and you can see here US is the first and UAE is the second and China is the third largest exporter of India Indian products at the same time India only accounts for a little over 2 percent of the China's total exports that means when China sorry China is exporting to India it is just the two percent of China's total export which is coming to India and this is according to the Federation of Indian Export Organization or FIO so as you can see here India is just accounting for a minuscule share of the China's export that is around two percent of the China's total export and it will have a limited impact on China if it loses that is around just around two percent China will lose if India and China stop trading then China would lose only three percent of its exports less than one percent of its imports while India will lose five percent of its exports as can be seen here and 14 percent of it in of its imports now let's see uh, some Chinese present in India as a startups now as per the gateway house report Chinese funds and the companies often route their investments in India through the offices located in the Singapore Hong Kong and Mauritius because uh, uh, channeling the investments from these countries will uh, invoke less uh, sanctions and it will also benefit in the taxes now Chinese uh, tech investors such as the Alibaba group and the Tencent these are the two giant uh, tech uh, companies of China and they have put a considerable amount of uh, around 4 billion dollars into Indian startups according to the report and as of March 2020 18 out of the 30 unicorns in the China in the uh, Indian startup market are Chinese funded and uh, let's see some numbers in the next page so these are the uh, startups Indian startups which are having uh, Chinese investment it includes big basket by Jews uh, dream 11 uh, Flipkart make my trip Ola Oyo and Paytm group 
and then uh, it also includes uh, snap deal policy bazaar and uh, swiggy zomato now let's see uh, chinese presence in the uh, smartphone app market now we all know tiktok is a uh, resourced from china but tiktok isn't the only china backed mobile application with a huge uh, following in india india saw around uh, 165% of increase in the app downloads that is between 2016 and 2018 and uh, half of these uh, download both in the ios and the google uh, play store where for the apps uh, with the chinese investments that includes uh, you see browser share it hello and zender pubg mobile and, and so on uh, so what is the risk uh, behind these chinese apps uh, so such uh, chinese apps uh, harvest more more than normal data more than normal amount of data as compared to other social media apps uh, since these apps require many permissions this is important the permissions they require permissions uh, from the smartphone users uh, which can uh, pose a serious threats or security concerns for the indian users and in the latest uh, development uh, considering the safety and uh, considering the safety and and the uh, sovereignty sovereignty safety and sovereignty of in the indian cyber space the it ministry or the minister ministry of uh, information and technology uh, recently invoked its power under the uh, section six, uh, 69a of the it act section 69a of the it act it has decided to block 59 chinese apps in a view of safeguarding the sovereignty and integrity of the nation and the defense of india security of the state and to maintain public order also now india is a heavily dependent on the bulk drugs on china now, india enjoys an important position in the global pharmaceutical sector as india is the largest provider of uh, generic drugs in the world thus it earned the title of pharmacy to the world so this is the title that india got because it is the uh, largest provider of generic drugs and the indian pharmaceutical industry is the third largest in the world by volume so third largest by volume and 14th rank 14 by value the country exported medicines worth around 14 billion dollars to the us in the 2018-19 according to a response to a query in the rajya sabha this data has been given by the rajya sabha and uh, but according to the same reply in the rajya sabha it has been uh, put that india imports around 2/3 of its active pharmaceutical ingredients or api that is to say it is the key ingredients of the drug from china itself as it can be seen here so around 2/3 of the uh, key ingredients of the drugs are procured from the china now apis are nothing but the bulk drugs bulk drugs and these are significant uh ingredients in the manufacture of drugs and the uh, hubei province hubei province in china is the hub for this is the hub for this api manufacturing industry now china is also having some foreign direct investment or fdi into the indian market in the metallurgical industries uh, renewable energy that is in sol- uh, through the they uh, manufacture or invest in the solar panels uh, electrical equipments then automotive and the chemicals they have roughly around uh, 75 manufacturing facilities for smartphone consumer appliances 
and construction equipment, the power gear, automobiles, optical fiber, chemicals. Now uh, let's see whether a blanket ban on the Chinese imports, what is the effect of it, a blanket ban? Now across the sector such as the pharmaceutical to telecommunications and automobiles, all the industry bodies or associations, they are speaking up against the complete boycott of the Chinese imports as it is developing uh, throughout the netizens. Uh, so banning imports of raw materials from China, uh, although it is, a, it is a voice right now, but it is finding any, without finding any proper alternative source will make the things worst. While the pharma consignments from the China, uh, they are officially stuck at various ports and airports in the country and it is expected to be cleared after thorough checks by the customs. A ban would create a shortage in the medicines which is at the moment very much needed in the case of a medical emergency and it is also needed in, uh, in the situation of a boosting for the export of Indian market. Uh, if China takes any retaliatory action such as importing some uh, restrictions in the procurement of the APIs. Uh, it would uh, affect or impact India more negatively. So let's see some trade deficit data. A trade deficit with the mainland China is now under 50 billion mark for the first time in the five years as can be seen here. Now it is under 50 billion dollars here you can see. Now uh, India can reduce its trade deficit with China. Uh, by around 8.4 billion dollars for the next financial year which is equivalent to around 17.3 percent of the deficit with China and this is also around 0.3 percent of the India's GDP. So India has the potential to reduce this trade deficit and uh, what, what needs to be done for this? Now ac according to the accurate rating study uh, there are nearly 40 sub-sectors in the India which have the potential to lower their import dependency on China as of now. So there is a potential that we can reduce the uh, trade deficit. Now we have seen that we are very much dependent on China on many uh, of the uh, sectors but uh, do we have the alternatives available with us? To do that, let's distinguish between the essential and the non-essential import items. Now the decision to boycott the non-essential items which are made in China, this can be left to the individuals to satisfy the growing national nationalist sentiment of the boycott China slogan. Now the trade related, we can take some trade related measures like uh, hiking the duties the import duties on the cheaper raw materials so that their import can be curbed and it would be better than outright ban. This would also uh, allow the access to the crucial essential ingredients such as some auto parts or the uh, medical equipment, medical ingredients such as APIs in the short term. While India looks to build self-reliance or Atmanirvar, Atmanirvar or maybe switch to some alternating trade, alternate trade partners. This can be US, Vietnam, Japan, Mexico and certain European countries. They can be tapped as an alternative import source for some crucial electronic vehicular pharmaceutical companies. However, the cost of raw materials if we import from these countries will be subsequently increased and this is ultimately may get passed to the consumers which are the common public. 
if the manufacturers cannot take any uh, step to absorb them so basically to say in short india will need to look into the totality of its trade with china and hong kong and implement certain short to long term plans to reduce its complete dependence on them and concentrate on building some alternative measures simultaneously that is to say in, uh, india can take some short term measures like uh, in, uh, hiking the import duties and long term measures like uh, uh, finding some alternative sources like these countries or uh, being atma nirbhar or self reliant so this can be the alternative measures that is that are available to us at the moment now after seeing all the relations whether it it was a border dispute and economic relations and trade relations we are finally able to come to a final conclusion in this the number one point is india is dependent on the chinese in the manufacturing so there is a need to understand that turning a border dispute into a trade war is unlikely to solve the border dispute and this trade war may hurt the india indian market right now in temporary conditions but gradually india can lower the import lower the imports lower the imports from china and it will result in the global supply chain to shift to different places like we have seen the alternative countries and there is another option of opening up of the opening up of global uh, economy or to say the global investment to the indian market and it has to be in a gradual manner and in another scenario india can also reply china strategically now in this in such matters of strategic importance thus in this context india must increase its engagement in the south china sea south china sea which is a key strategic issue for china now india can do along with the uh, famous quad group which consists of india itself the us and japan and australia so india can do this by strategic means next uh, india uh, should also consider modernizing its military equipments military hardwares now in this context uh, india can proceed by Uh, finalizing the deal of the S400 which is a long range air defense system from Russia or it can also uh, fasten the uh, procurement of the Rafale jets Rafale fighter jets and also the meteor the meteor missiles the meteor missiles which is radar guided and beyond visual range air to air missile which is having over 120 km of range and this particular uh, missile is designed by the organization of MBDA European organization and the, all of these uh, military equipments and more they will certainly put india into a better position now next next uh, with growing presence of china in the indian ocean region and in the border itself india must relook at its ties with her neighbor neighboring countries and also with the nations in the ior region 
Now, India has recently took a decision to ban uh, 59 Chinese apps, which gives a strong message to China's rise as a global technological power. And also, countries like US has banned the question the Huawei Huawei for their 5G technologies. So, the steps by US and India in this uh, technological field may likely to follow by followed by other countries as well, which will put the Chinese global technological uh, technolo technology industries into a big big uh, problem. Now also Indian authorities or government authorities have recently asked the uh, largest uh, e-commerce companies or firms in India such as Amazon and Flipkart to start showing the country of origin tag on the goods that are sold by these e-commerce platforms and that will certainly induce a sense of nationalism by this and also Indian railways in a recent time terminate the contract with the Chinese companies for the signaling works in UP and uh, BSNL and MTNL two state owned telecom companies have barred the using use of Chinese equipment for upgrading the 4G uh, facilities. So these are two other uh, examples of boycotting China. Now a total disruption, but we have to uh, keep in mind that uh, a blanket ban or a total disruption in the trade ties, it will temporarily hurt Indian business and the poor, poor uh, common mass, especially at the time when the economy is already in a uh, staggering phase due to the new normal of the COVID-19. So as India tries its best to emerge the global, as a global investment destination and global supply chains are rigged, that means global supply chains are getting, uh, getting uh, shifted, it will be some time, that is it will be some delay, there will be some delay to match the sheer scale of China. In this context, a blanket ban, that is a total ban of Chinese imports as of now will not only derail the nascent recovery post COVID-19 and it also challenges the Indian aspiration to emerge as a manufacturer of finished goods. Now the total disruption in the trade relations is certainly not an immediate solution because India is a responsible global power, that is to say India is a responsible member of the WTO, that is the World Trade Organization and India has always adhered to the rules of WTO to maintain the a global economic stability. So disrupting trade relations could jeopardize could jeopardize its diplomatic campaign to target China. But again, we have to remember that in case China become very hostile to our nation, to India, by attacking our country with its military might or military power, and at that time, New Delhi can be prevented from cutting off the economic relations or any other relation with China. And in that case, the hostilities between the two countries will escalate. But it will be the measure of, it, it is a measure of last resort for India. And at last, on a positive note, we should end that uh, India and China are amongst the uh, largest of economies in the world. And the demography and markets and the military mights of the world. Therefore, it is in the interest of both the nations to align their energies for the growth and development 
of their people and in the global peace in the region so and this marks the end of the topic of india china relations i hope it will be helpful for you any further updates for any uh, this particular update or the topic is covering up to the month of june 2020 and for any further update you can kindly refer to some daily newspapers and the government websites such as the ministry of external affairs so thank you for your time